Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV, and we are looking at Infinite City, an imaginative atlas by Rebecca Solnit. But first, please do subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly, and please consider supporting us on Patreon or Ko-Fi using the links in the description below. Now we're used to thinking of maps as purely practical and informational, whether online, printed individually, or collected together in an atlas. But if we step back and think about the essence of maps as data about a place visualized geographically, we begin to expand what is meant by an atlas. So it goes with Rebecca Solnit's Infinite City, an atlas that is also a love note to the city of San Francisco. It is a beautiful book that unfolds as a series of maps created primarily by cartographers Benjamin Pease and Shizue Siegel, along with a host of other local artists and writers. Each of the maps imagines a set of ideas on the varied grid of the city, sometimes the surrounding region as well, along with an essay by Solnit or one of several contributors. I was perhaps initially grabbed by Cinema City given my current interest in films set in San Francisco of the 1960s and 1970s. The map, composed by Shizue Siegel, brings together locations used by Alfred Hitchcock in his classic Vertigo, with early experiments in motion picture by Edward Mybridge at the turn of the 20th century. Overlaid on the map are the locations of the city's movie palaces, past and present. Most no longer exist, but some do, like the Castor and Roxy, where I have seen many a screening. They perfectly frame Mission Dolores Cemetery, where Madeline, played by Kim Novak, places flowers during her walkabout in Vertigo. The map also chronicles significant locations in Mybridge's life and photographic innovations on the path to cinematography. It turns out he was quite the scoundrel, as chronicled in Solnit's accompanying text. Indeed, I was most drawn to the maps that elucidated the hidden history of the city. The area of the Moscone Center, Yerba Buena Gardens, and several museums was once a chaotic warren of small warehouses, shops, and SROs. I did know this, but I never saw it laid out so clear as on this map. The spine of the neighborhood, 3rd Street, is along the spine of the book. Many of the narrower streets continue where they are now replaced by the modern-day Yerba Buena Gardens and Moscone Center. And some streets like Massetti Sherwood and Hunt Streets have disappeared completely under the footprint of SF MoMA. This neighborhood was often considered one of the city's most notorious slums, but it was also a vital neighborhood that many people, primarily older men, called home. Redevelopment doesn't end history, as places like SF MoMA are important in my own life in the city. And the southernmost section of the map has new life with a community garden and streets named for Filipino heroes like Mabini and Lapu Lapu. Third Street continues down the central waterfront into the Bayview District. But once upon a time, it was three different streets connected by long bridges over long gone bodies of water. The current Mission Bay neighborhood was once actually Mission Bay, with Mission Rock a tiny outcropping on its eastern edge. The Dog Patch and Irish Hill were part of the historical eastern shore of the city, but the waterways and bridges around them have long been filled in, with Kentucky Street on the central waterfront and Railroad Avenue in the Bayview subsumed into the extended Third Street. The map shows the outlines of the modern expanded area over the historical shoreline, and is adorned with artwork by Allison Pebworth. The history of Fillmore Street and the many neighborhoods it connects is also rich and complex. The map of Fillmore Street is juxtaposed with a Rorschach inkblot designed by Gent Sturgeon, representing the way the street has been interpreted and reinterpreted over time. The northern end traverses some of the ritziest parts of the city in the Marina, Cow Hollow, and Pacific Heights. But this is also the home of Sixth Gallery, which launched the beat poetry movement with Allen Ginsberg, our friend the late Ruth Weiss, and others. 2232 Fillmore in Pacific Heights was the location where Jay DeFeo created her monumental painting, The Rose. Further south, we encountered Japantown, a shadow of its former self. Many of the Japanese Americans who lived here were displaced during the World War II internments. Across Geary Boulevard was the Fillmore neighborhood, a great center of black culture in the western U.S. that was largely leveled by redevelopment. The Fillmore Concert Hall survived and thrived, but this is also the milieu from which Jim Jones' People's Temple emerged. And further south, we encounter a long-vanished neighborhood populated by Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. This green section on the map outlines the infamous redevelopment zone. This is a largely reviled event in the city's history, but in the spirit of the Rorschach test, the modern Geary Boulevard Expressway is a positive part of my own history in the city. 
A common theme in many of the maps is the juxtaposition of disparate elements. For example, the map Monarchs and Queens brings together locations of various butterfly habitats with queer clubs and public spaces past and present. And the artwork by Mona Carone features various butterfly species and a sister of perpetual indulgence. The juxtaposition in Death and Beauty is a bit darker, as it layers all the murders in the city in 2008 with all of the city's iconic cypress trees in 2009. The 99 murders tend to be located in the eastern part of the city. The cypress trees are more spread out, but are more concentrated in major parks, like McLaren Park, Lake Merced, Sunset Boulevard, and Golden Gate Park. This curious segment of trees actually outlines Sunset Reservoir, with the cypresses quite visible along Kintara Street. Perhaps the most fanciful of the maps reimagines the city and its neighborhoods through the 19th century pseudoscience of phrenology, where bumps on a person's head were mapped to different characteristics. For example, our own neighborhood is ascribed the characteristic continuity. The bearded hunter's point is an amusing touch, as is the central area's being labeled Safeway. Another fanciful map imagines the city as an island. It is almost an island already, bounded by water on three sides. So Siegel just added the southern coast to create her classic Treasure Island map, featuring many of the city's treasures, both well-known and obscure. Southern edges are also reimagined in this map of the Mission District, which is outlined by the southern border of the United States. We see migrants along Cesar Chavez Street, along with the neighborhood's many community spaces and the territories of two major gangs the Norteños and the Sereños. Interestingly, the Sereños territory is further north, and the accompanying text by Adriana Camarena is perhaps the most poignant in the book. There are many more maps and stories to explore in this collection, as well as depths to the ones that we shared. I highly recommend checking out this atlas for yourself. Do you have any thoughts from your own personal maps of San Francisco, or perhaps your own hometowns? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.